uh, it is by electronic means and also that first to discuss about communications system model and then after that to adopt telecommunication system from that. And we will discuss about functions of telecommunication system elements. Actually, the general purpose of telecommunication is known. It is easy for communication of information from one point to the other. But also, it can be interpreted as usage of e-services, which might not involve information transmission from one user to the other, but rather for other purposes like e-marketing, e health and also uh, so many other uses can be mentioned. Uh, it is by but in this aspect we are going to discuss the technical or elite uh, way of explanation of the functions of telecommunication systems. Because even the layman can tell you what the purpose of telecommunication system is. We cannot stop by saying uh, it is used for uh, information transmission from one point to the other. We need to have further discussion about that and we are going to do it in the uh, first lecture, which is the introductory part. Then we will talk about protocols and uh, to do that first we have to start with standards. Standards are high-level discussions, agreements in the standards development. Probably uh, the agreement can be done with people that might not be technically versed. They might be leaders of some population. And the organization can be, for instance, the UN. They can talk about things, services that can be provided by telecommunications. But in order to interface that to, you know, practice, we need to have protocols driven from standards. So therefore, protocols are follow-ups of standards when you would like to put it to the ground for the implementation. And then signaling systems will use protocols. Therefore, we are going to discuss about these protocols, set of rules that the network element is used to perform some function. So we will talk about protocols as well in the first lecture. And the other is telecommunication systems and services. Uh, we will be talking about telecommunications services, service provision in the past and in the present. We will also mention some hot issues like deregulation, privatization, and also related matters in this topic. Since uh, our Ito Telecom is also in that type of trend, you might be interested in this part of the lecture. The purposes of the deregulation, the driving factors, the driving forces of deregulation, privatization issues, why we need it, it is justifiable, and also other issues can be mentioned and uh, we will talk about it uh, in the introductory session, particular in this part of the discussion, we will have uh, so many points to discuss. And then the last part in this lecture will be discussion of quality of service. As you know, quality of service is very essential for any operator to survive. The users should be satisfied or else, if there is, when there is competition like the privatization that is going to happen in our country, they might desert one operator for the other. Therefore, quality of service is essential. Uh, basically, quality of service is uh, measured or assessed by the end user. We are going to also raise another term, which is known as grade of service. We will uh, discuss compare between these two, even though they are not comparable at all. When we say quality of service, the judge is a user. And when we say grade of service, it is a matter of the operator or some other service provider. And they are defining the amount of channel elements that can be lost during a certain assessment. 
So basically, we will have satisfaction test or measure of quality of service like uh, 98 and 97%, something like that. But grade of service, on the other hand, is measured in 1%, 2%, and others. The second lecture is discussion of fundamentals of telecommunications technologies. Like in this, in this part, uh, the fundamental, uh, so the fundamentals of telecommunication technologies. In this, you know, discussion in this part of the lecture, uh, we are going to pick some starting point to discuss about fundamentals of our fundamental concepts in telecommunication technologies. And basically, we are going to compare technologies by their switching capability. That means, uh, like, uh, during transmission, we would like to have some discussion of the switching technique applied. So, uh, we will have a discussion of uh, circuit switching, packet switching, and also VC packet switching. And uh, we are going to discuss uh, important points and we are going to also have examples of technologies applying that, you know, switching technologies that, that's mentioned. So the first will be categorizing or creating taxonomy of networks by, they, by their switching technique. And we will have examples for each of the techniques that we are going to mention. The other is uh, multiple access techniques that are implemented in telecommunication systems or technologies in general. We have two categories of multiple access techniques, basic categories. Uh, first, we are going to discuss about the contentionless, and then the contention-based can also be mentioned with that. Basically, all technologies must employ one or another type of multiple access technique, because there is a resource to share and then we have to define the access technique on the data link layer, basically. So we will have that type of talk, multiple access techniques, and also uh, with that, uh, at, the, at the end of the second lecture, we will talk about fundamentals of switching technology. That means the switch fabric will be discussed in this part. The switch fabric is going to be discussed in this uh, part of the lecture. So after brief discussion of fundamentals of telecommunication technologies, we are going to start the third lecture, discussion about broadband communication systems. We will start with this definition. Uh, basically, we will have categories. Uh, we will have wireless broadband and wired or guided medium type of broadband technology. Uh, for the case of uh, wireless broadband technology, we will start with similar mobile technology and the recent trends in that. That means uh, broadband uh, will be defined later, but the and then after that, fixes, fixed access broadband communication trends. Basically, in the wireless broadband, uh, we are going to pick examples like cellular mobile network and WiMAX. And in the fixed access broadband technology, we will talk about the cable technology, cable TV technology uh, that, that, is, uh, that is also serving as an ISP to provide broadband services. Plus, we will talk about DSL, XDSL technologies. And then uh, we are going to talk about fiber optics technology. These are the three examples that we are going to use to deal with fixed access broadband communication trends. So uh, wireless broadband, fixed, fixed access broadband, we cover the third and the fourth lectures respectively. And then after that, uh, we are going to talk about interconnected transmission technology. And then in that, we will get different evolutionary stories about transmission technologies. We will start with TDH, Plesio Digital Herald.
And then we will mention reasons why it is obsolete now. And uh, we are going to talk about synchronous digital hierarchy, SDH. Since SDH is basically defined for copper based and distribution systems, uh, we will also talk about SONET, synchronous optical network. SONET operates with WDM. As you know, WDM is uh, the basis for SONET operation, wavelength division multiplexing. VPN and MPLS will also be mentioned. MPLS is uh, multi protocol level switching. I don't know if we have covered it in our high performance networks class. Did we talk about MPLS there? And this is also my way of confirming that you are attending or not. Respond. Did we talk about MPLS? Okay. I see. So you are attending. MPLS will be uh, discussed. The multi protocol level switching is essential, as the name suggests. This is about uh, supporting multiple protocols by basically by operators, service providers, and then uh, we are going to discuss it is position in the OSI. Most of the time when we discuss technologies, it is uh, mandatory to mention the protocol architecture. And once the protocol architecture of a certain technology is compared with some basic uh, comparison mechanism, uh, in which case we are going to use OSI system. Open system interconnection is one of the famous types of protocol architectures to assess technologies. We have two of them. One is OSI, which is European, and you have also TCP IP. A protocol architectures also exist as the Westerners, but the OSI architecture is easy to use, simple to use, and we are going to copy it. The position of this MPLS approach uh, in comparison to it, and also the services of MPLS. When we say there is a certain operator has got MPLS, what does that mean? All these types of things will be covered in this part of the lecture. So once we cover this few lecture, uh, basically our next discussion will be will be home and office communication systems. Uh, this is uh, to mention some of the technologies that have evolved. Basically, the principles are covered or will be covered in other concepts in other approaches, but. The main objective of this six lecture is the advancement of the already existing technologies and also in comparison with basically the IP platform that is being created starting from the fourth generation and onwards. As you know, from now on, every technology or infrastructure will be all IP platform. And then the next trend will be cloud service prodigy. And for that, we have to also assess the communication systems that are implemented at office and at home, whether they are uh, capable of supporting the services that can be provided by such recent trends and modern types of approaches like the cloud. And we will mention some of the points related to that. They are just starting points for our talk that we should know. And I urge all of you to attend the classes because most of the principles might not be written on the lecture note, and therefore it is also helpful if you attend because there are some issues that we are going to mention uh, while we start talking about the written lecture note. So in this sixth lecture, uh, we will talk about DECT, for instance, digitally enhanced cordless telephony, which is an advancement of the already existing uh, PSTN network, if you might say, and it, it, the use of wireless local loop and wired local loop. And then basically DECT is European, and it is wireless local loop type of technology, which gives mobility for the uh, terminal that you have as a PSTN service provision. Not only that, the PSTN box becomes a certain access point, whereas 
the terminal or the handle that you would use during PEST ERAS becomes smart and can provide you with broadband connectivity. So therefore, this is essential. Then we will talk about IPPVX. As you know, PVX is private branch exchange. It existed forever. Like when you have a certain enterprise has got some connection to a certain service provider like telephone service, the company applies only for one link, but afterwards, that link can be shared by several offices by using extensions. That is done by PBS, traditionally, what is known as private branch exchange. But that has, got, that has also evolved. As I told you, the service provided that, that is going to happen you know, in the future might not be the legacy type of service, rather the over-the-top type of service or OTT. We will talk about it when we start the lectures, that services by telecom operators these days can be categorized into two broad categories. One is legacy service provision, and the other is over-the-top type of service provision. So now the PVX has evolved to support this OTT types of service provision. Good. So uh, in this part, after we discuss about IPPVX, uh, we are going to mention a little bit about Wi-Fi and its recent trends. Like, uh, as you know, Wi-Fi is the one that you get in the public is American, and it is known as IEEE 802.11. And the recent advancement of that is IEEE 802.11 AC type, which makes use of the TU white space and others to provide broadband connectivity for remote areas. But the other one, which is uh, the hotspot type, is the advanced type, is IEEE 802.11. N type, which, which provides around 400 megabits per second throughput. And there are the previous types, the B and the G types as well. We will mention that and talk about it. The advancement is, uh, and the trends are uh, points of discussion. The other is PLC technologies. When you say PLC, we are referring to power line communication. This is also an emerging type of technology. The mechanism of using the already existing power line for broadband service provision. This is pioneered basically by countries such as Turkey. And the idea is since uh, power line is, you know, found throughout the country, even in the remote areas, you can use that power line to provide broadband connection as well. Instead of uh, thinking about over overhauling other cable or other infrastructure, it is possible to use that power line for broadband service provision with some additional package. That is also a uh, discussion point there. It is categorized under home and office communication systems. So there are others like the short range communication systems, which includes Bluetooth, Zigbee, and also RFID types of communication mechanisms, which we are going to mention a little bit. And there are industrial automation communication systems, like uh, mode, mode pass and also wireless heart type, and also manufacturing automation and also control mechanisms. So this will conclude our discussion of the sixth lecture. The seventh lecture is elaboration of uh, local area networks in general, since this is familiar to most of you, and I, I suggest, I suppose, all of you, since you took high performance networks earlier. Uh, here is about wireless local area networks in most instances. That means there are also other LANs which might not be based on wireless LAN, but uh, the idea is simple and derivative of what you already know, and therefore you will be given reading assignment in this regard. Basically, you are going to read about wireline LAN, guided medium type, like Ethernet and others, 
and wireless LAN. The wireless LAN, most of the discussion will be about Wi-Fi, which you already know. And even you can mention high performance, hyper LAN type one and type two, type two that will depend on your uh, uh, high performance uh, networks class, HPN class. So therefore, this seven lecture is not new, but it is here because this is part of the curriculum. So uh, you should get ready to read about it. Uh, probably I might not also collect the reading assignments regarding local area networks, since it is mentioned in most parts of other you know lectures, other discussions that we are going to have. But it is essential it should be included in your evaluation and exams that might appear. So after we talk about this seventh lecture, uh, we will have the fundamentals of trans broadband network infrastructure, which we started earlier a little bit. But now uh, we are going to have a mechanism of calculation of the amounts by the hierarchies. Plus, we are going to also discuss ATM alongside PDH, SDH, SONET. Basically, this is the hierarchy formation that we are going to discuss. And in the hierarchy formation, what causes the shift from one level to the other? Are there permitted or not permitted levels in the transmission technologies? And what happens after the information arrives to a certain local area, I mean, certain local exchange or base station? All those types of issues will be mentioned and discussed in the eighth lecture. But here you will master what you started discussing there, and you will be able to calculate the hierarchy stages starting from the T1 and the E1 up to the STM higher levels or STS higher levels. STM represents SDH uh, and STS re represents SONET. And then uh, ATM, as you remember, it is a type of technology that keeps a certain level of quality, as you all recall. So now the thing will be ATM will be also considered as part of the transmission technologies. In this own ATM switch is capable of communicating with SONET, SDH, and other hierarchies. Of course, PDH is obsolete. We will see why it is obsolete, but uh, we are going to see how ATM is considered as uh, the transmission technology that is, you know, in relation to SDH and SONET. The interesting picture, uh, I would say, is the talk about network convergence and emerging technologies, in which case we are going to talk about uh, current and future technologies. Like we will talk about the issue of convergence, what it means, and what does it mean when we say fixed mobile convergence. This is a fundamental concept, and we are going to see from the perspective of operators, vendors, and others. Uh, so uh, we will have a good discussion about fixed mobile convergence. In short, we call it FMC. And after that, we will talk about 5G, and it is also architecture. The 5G architecture is basically different from the already existing 4G, 3G, and others. Why is that? We are going to see it. Then the important things, the important concepts like cloud computing and cloud service provision, uh, plus the enablers of that cloud service provision, the virtualization concept, plus the use of software-defined networking. So therefore, this part of the lecture, lecture nine, is very interesting. And we are going to assess the future trends of telecom networks in general. As the subject or the course name suggests, we are going to see what the future of telecommunications will be. Like what will be after 5G, for instance. So the, such types of things uh, need some sort of discussion. And we are going to accomplish that on the ninth lecture. The last part will be discussion of IoT, Internet of Things, which is, of course, a continuation of the advancement of technologies or service provisions. And IoT is a result of machine-to-machine, device-to-device communication. 
advancement of immune systems and system of chip and others. All of these things will contribute for the Internet of Things. So uh, that part, that discussion of Internet of Things will be uh, our, co our conclusive remark in the ninth lecture. Plus, there is a term known as the next generation networks, which was started when 3G was about to start, but still that NGN term is usable because all the time, at any point in time, you will have next generation network. Or we will see uh, why we, we use the term next generation network and how it is related to fixed mobile convergence that we are going to accomplish in the ninth lecture. Uh, saying that, this will be, you know, the introduction of the course, generally. There are references, as usual, I have references listed down. But uh, my usual advice is that you should not be fixated on this list of books. Rather, you need to have your own choice of books, since we are going to touch, jump here and there when we discuss different technologies. You should be in line with the topics instead, and then try to elaborate your understanding of those topics. Since everything cannot be found in one book, it is useless to read only one book to have some knowledge about trends in communication in the technologies course. So you can have lots of books of your own, but according to the topic, you can have uh, many different books which are recent, and since the fact is always one, so that is not a problem. Make sure, however, that the book that you are reading is uh, reputable. I mean, something published in well-known publisher, by well-known publisher and others. So let's do that. And uh, this is the whole list of books that you might read, but as I told you, this is just uh, something that you should follow if you like to have. Then the next discussion will be the assessment that will happen. Like I did during your HPN class, uh, you will have paper review. Paper review uh, will have some 25% of the overall market credits that you are going to have, approximately 25%. So that means you need to prepare for that immediately. You have to start to look for you know, journals from well-known publishers or well-known institutions like IEEE, Springer, Eurasit, or Science Direct. Lots of them also have, there are also others that I have not mentioned. But you should be careful not to choose the paper from predatory journals, which means journals that, that uh, just publish overnight and uh, which are not peer-reviewed, what I would like to review is, is a journal uh, from peer-reviewed uh, publishers or organizations. This should be recent, like 2015 and onwards are regarded as recent, but after you get the paper, uh, the review technique, probably you have also taken research methods class, so you are going to teach yourselves on how to write review paper. You started already HPM, therefore on that what you do is to when you try to review a certain paper, in actual you know sense you are going to read several papers. One paper and others to compare it with. And then uh, you will also put your viewpoint about it. Uh, please follow my triple standard of paper writing and then uh, your review paper should include uh, comparison part or basically uh, what we call appreciation or also critics or we call it critics section that part will be uh, the one that that is that's going to tell me about your understanding of the whole concept of the paper that you have read. Therefore, do not write your paper carelessly for two things. One, you will lose credit. And two, 
you will not get the knowledge that is expected of you after reading or reviewing the paper. So try to do your best in this regard, in this aspect. Take your time, choose paper, and then after you choose the paper, uh, try to go through all the steps necessary to review that paper, because reading the paper and reporting is not the point, the target of this assignment. But rather, comparing it with other workers, putting judgment about the paper that you have read. Because it doesn't take the whole semester to report about a certain paper. Therefore, be careful, it is not report writing. It is paper review, in which case you will be experts to judge a certain author. So take that point and then that will be part of the evaluation. The other one will be reading assignment that I'm going to give you from time to time between lectures. And you are going to report that. In this aspect, uh, what I'm going to see is the, the content of your reading, like how much have you read, how much have you taken the reading assignment seriously, and also the pointers that you have covered while you read, and something like that. And if you have good writing format, that also counts. So the thing is, you have to read and report properly. Read and report. So uh, this is essential, uh, reading the assignment, because it is going to fill the gap that is not covered in lectures. So this reading assignment uh, might not be only one, you might have several reading assignments. All of them might account for about 25% or more, depending on the number of assignments that you are going to have. And that means, uh, in general, the paper review plus reading assignments will cover 50% or more of the credits. And the remaining part will be final exam. The final exam will have 40 out of 50 marks. And then that is how you will be evaluated. So do your best. And the class representative should compile the choices of the papers ahead of time and send me by the name of the student, the title of the paper, year of publication, or something like that is essential to mention. So after I see the list, I will give you go ahead. Uh, you will not hurry at the end of the day. And when you do that, if you hurry at the end of you know the, the semester, uh, definitely you are not going to produce a good type of review. So do it as early as possible. And also get prepared to read and also be attentive in classes. Uh, our classes shall be conducted online but exams will be conducted in person unlike our previous encounter so uh, you should be ready for that that is how we are going to continue in this semester the time of the class the lecture will change i'm suggesting the the coming week we will have it at 6 p.m this same day but Accordingly, we will reschedule, and then if it is okay for you to have it on Saturday, for instance, the morning part, uh, I might think about it, or in the afternoon, we can also make it late afternoon, something like that, uh, since I have also another class. So uh, that is how it is going to be. So that is all from me for today. If you have any question about the introductory session, uh, somebody said, oh, how about uh, mid-exam? Well, uh, I find it not necessary in most instances because you are going to write paper, you are going to read, read you are going to have reading assignments. Instead of having mid-semester mid exam, uh, it is better for you to increase the points the grade is earned by the paper review and the reading assignments. In my previous experiences, most of the time, students uh, do not do very well in mid-term exams, and also for that matter, final exams, but uh, you might be better ones, I don't know. But because of that, uh, it brings my judgment about your grades question when I see, you know, uh, students not performing well in the mid-semester exam. 
So that is uh, my choice of evaluation. Of course, the lecture notes. I will definitely send you the lecture, no the lecture notes. After I finish every lecture note, I will send you the lecture notes to you. But as I told you, lecture notes are only you know some pointers in the discussion. You have to take notes as if you are in class. Listen to that. You will benefit from this one. So I will try to have some slot in the afternoon if I can. If not, we will continue like this. Maybe we might change the, day, the date. Uh, Wednesday can be changed to some other day in the week. And then uh, we will continue that way. But uh, for most of you, since you will be uh, at job, I'm going to conduct the class around 6 p.m. in the afternoon. I will let you know uh, early. Oh. So I will do that. I will inform you about the session and something like that. But the thing is that uh, it should not coincide with your work hour. That I understand. So we are going to deal with it that way. All right. So uh, I will see you in the coming Wednesday. <laughs>